Hello, my name is Tessa Myron, and I'm going to be talking to you today about how to use Mestranova for working up your NMRs. The very first step is going to be getting the Mestranova software. You can find it on the OrgChem Boulder website, as shown here, if you scroll down and find Experiment 6 Practical NMR. You will need to click both of these links, first of all Mestranova, but later these NMR data files in order to get some of the data for this particular experiment. But first of all, we want to open up this link that says Mestranova. It takes us to the Software for Organic Chemistry page, as also part of this website, which walks through several of the different softwares, but particularly for today, Mestranova. It is important when you are installing Mestranova that you be connected to the campus servers in order to download the license file and to activate it. Uh, if you are on campus, this means that you need to be connected to the UCB wireless, not UCB guest. If you are not on campus, you will need to use the VPN, which is described higher up on this page. There is a link right here that says OIT Mestranova page. If you click that link, it will take you to a login. If you log in with your CU Boulder, Identity. It will then take you to a series of downloads that have the Mac version of the Mestranova installer along with the various Windows installations. Keep in mind that you will also need this license file here and you can leave it as a zip file. That will be used when you actually do the license a portion of the installation. The rest of this page walks through detailed steps on how to install, particularly if you do not get the registration wizard pop-up. But after you have followed these instructions, you should be able to open Mestranova and check in the bottom right-hand corner of the software that there is this green squiggly symbol, which indicates that your license is active and properly working. If instead you do not have that symbol, but in a red symbol, uh, it is important to follow these steps to troubleshoot before contacting somebody to fix the issue. Once you have Mestranova installed, once again, you will need to download these NMR data files from the same place as we went to get the Mestranova installation. They will download as a zip file, which you can leave them as. When you open Mestranova, you then go to File, Open, Find that zip file, usually in your downloads folder, and hit open, and it should open all three NMR spectra included in that file. We will want to start with ethyl benzoate, the first of those files. In the lab manual guide for how to work up your NMR spectra, there are more detailed instructions. I will primarily be hitting the highlights, so if you have issues or would like to further read into how to do these steps, there is further information in the manual. The very first step once your NMR spectra is open is to check the phase. There's a image of a badly phased NMR spectra in the manual, but if your spectra is uh, poorly phased, for example, there are peaks going negative, the solution is to find the tool the phase correction tool, which you then can hit the down arrow next to and hit automatic correction. It will then correct any phasing issues that might be present in your NMR. An additional tool to be aware of is the zoom tool. There is this zoom in tool, the zoom out tool, and the full spectrum tool. The zoom in tool allows you to quick, click and drag in order to Highlight a section of the air NMR and zoom in closer if you would like to take a closer look. This full spectrum symbol, the one with the little box down in the left hand corner, allows you to go back to the entire full spectrum size. To start working up this NMR, we will want to be zoomed into this major section where all of our peaks are. We will then want to go ahead and add integrations to our peaks. One way to do this is to find the integration tool, hit the down arrow, and find manual. This can also be achieved by hitting the I button. You will then want to start to the left of the peak, click and drag, and it will automatically integrate the peak. Do keep in mind that the first peak that you integrate will be set to a size of 1. 
The importance here is the ratio differences, as we will later set the exact numbers once we have assigned the peaks to our compound. If you would like additional information as to how these integration curves or the numbers below can be added, removed, or formatted, there is additional information in the document. The next thing we will want to do is peak picking. This tool here is the peak picking tool. We will want to go to the arrow next to it and find the manual threshold. It is also found using the K button. You will then want to click to the left of one of your peaks and you can go across all the peaks setting a threshold for what you would like it to consider a peak and release when you are done. It will then pick each individual peak amongst those peaks that fit that threshold. We are now prepared to begin assigning peaks. The very first peak that we would like to assign is our solvent peak. In this case, our solvent peak is going to be from our deuterated chloroform. The peak related to the chloroform will be at approximately 7.26 or in that region, which matches up with this small peak here. Once you have found your deuterated chloroform peak, you will want to find the reference button. Hit the arrow, hit reference, also the L button works. Select this peak and then either type in the expected shift of 7.26 or you can find the solvents button below which lists a, a common NMR solvents including chlor chloroform and will give you the new shift. This then makes your entire spectrum referenced according to that chloroform peak which is particularly useful for comparison between spectra. Additionally, we may want to look for peaks that are related to impurity solvents. In this spectrum, they may be the peaks at 3.7 approximately, this group of peaks here, and also the peaks at 8.1, this set of peaks here. If you have an idea of what your impurity might be, you can hit the T button, which will allow you to add an annotation to your spectrum, listing either simply impurity or the exact identity if you believe you know what it is. Now we will have the opportunity to assign the exact protons in the compounds. In order to do this, you will want to open ChemDraw and make sure to draw the structure that you expect. In this case, it is the structure of ethyl benzoate. We can then hit copy and paste this directly into Mestronova, which will make a structure that is automatically assigned numbers for each of the hydrogens in the compound, allowing us to do assignment of the various hydrogens. The exact numbering of the hydrogens does not matter and may vary from what is shown in the manual and in this demonstration. In order to do assignments, you can find the analysis portion and then go down to assignments and manual assignment. Also the A key works. You then can select the particular peak that you would like to make an assignment and then click the corresponding part of the chem draw structure. You can hold down the control key if you wish to select multiple atoms at once. Once you have finished assigning your peaks, you can see that the numbers above them correspond to numbers on the ChemDraw structure on your Mestronova page. Now that we do have assignments, however, we will be able to match up our integrals to the exact number of protons we expect for a particular peak. 
We can do this by finding a particular peak for which we believe we know the integration and right clicking the integral label. For example, this peak at approximately 4.3, we know should have an integration of two. We right click down here and hit edit integral. We then can type in two in this box and it will automatically adjust this peak and all of the others to maintain the ratio. If you need to adjust your integrals, you can zoom in and you can drag the ends of these integral areas to better fit the peaks. Now that we have finished with the workup of our first spectra, it is time to talk about how we predict a product's peaks. There are several different tools that can be useful in predicting peaks. One of them is online spectra databases. There are two common spectral databases, including SDBS, which you can find simply by Googling, and it pulls up this first spectral database for organic compounds. If you click into that link, it will then take you to the website where you simply have to agree to the disclaimer in order to access a series of tools that allow you to search for various IR and NMR spectra. Another database is NMR Shift DB, which you can also find via Google and brings you to this site here. Do keep in mind uh, that there are a series of different spectra included on some of these databases, including carbon-13, NMR, IR, and mass spec. So be careful to choose the correct spectra that you are interested in. It is also important to keep, out, keep an eye out for protons that may not be labeled explicitly, particularly in compounds of high symmetry. Once you have found a compound, on the database, you can simply take a screenshot of the result and include it as part of your report. Additionally, NMR prediction software can be helpful, including nmrdb.org slash new underscore predictor which will load you into a software that will help you to predict your NMR based on the structure of the compound you expect. There is also web.chemdoodle.com and these links are included in the manual. Once you have become comfortable with working up NMR spectra, including making the assignments using databases and NMR prediction tools, the last step is using NMR to help calculate the purity of a reaction mixture. We know that the integral of an NMR peak is directly proportional to how many protons are contributing to it. But for impure mixtures, this is not necessarily the case. The integral sizes will be scaled by how much of the compound is in the mixture. However, we can take advantage of this and it allows us to get, uh, to get some sort of idea of purity, yield, and other quantities. There is an example shown in the manual of how to perform one of these calculations and you will also be performing such a calculation on our spectra number two of benzoic acid. Once we have the spectra open, we will go through all of the steps as before to do the integrations, assign impurities, and compound peaks before attempting to calculate the purity. Once your NMR has been fully assigned and you have your integrations, you will want to choose in particular two peaks that you are certain are only from one compound or the other. 
you do not want to choose any peaks that could potentially be overlapping between the two compounds. For this example, we have chosen this peak here, labeled for 4 and 6, and this peak here, labeled for carbon 16. You then can use these in the molar ratio formula, a formula as demonstrated in the manual in order to determine the mole percent and the total mole basis of this NMR spectrum. This should give approximately an 81% yield for this reaction. Once you are done with these two portions that we have gone through together in this demonstration, make sure to follow the directions in the lab manual to work up the third spectrum labeled free tetracyclone. You will want to follow many of these steps and be careful about reading the directions in order to be fully aware of what you are looking for in your peaks and in your calculations. Additionally, you will want to work up the NMR sample that you submitted in the lab.